Hi, welcome back to GPS Dairy Consulting's vlog post. So this is where myself, Trent Dato, gets to talk to you about uh, data, innovation, and technology in the dairy industry. Uh, so my first vlog post was about why data and innovation are not equal to one another. This was followed up by my colleague, uh, Nathan Poskowski, about... Uh, the time investment it takes to implement new technology on, on your dairy. And then the topic today is why it's okay not to be first. It's okay not to be the first one to implement technology on, on your dairy. So we've probably all seen uh, the, the adoption curve or the diffusion of innovation. This is that, that bell-shaped curve where we have our, our innovators, early adopters, early majority, late majority, and our skeptics. So just as a refresher, we can we can run through those. So the innovators are those who are asking those what if questions. You know, what if we had a technology that did this? What if we did this a different way? So these are, are the people who are, are spearheading our, our industry uh, forward. And then we have our early adopters. So these are the ones who, who see this technology, who see these management practices being put to use and are like, ooh, we got to try that. Uh, so these are, are people who, who really like to try new things, who you know, are going to wait in line for the new technology. are going to be doing a lot of uh, pilot programs and stuff like that on, on their dairies. Next is, is the early majority. So these are the ones who, who like to see the, the kind of the technology or management practice kind of play out on these pilot herds, like to see a little bit of data. But they definitely want to be part of, of the process. They want to have the competitive advantage. Of, of using these technologies on, on their dairy. The next one, the late majority. So these ones are gonna sit back for a little while longer. Uh, they want more accumulation of data. They want to be able to, to firmly calculate uh, the true advantage of, of using that technology and, and how it's gonna impact their business. The final one are, are skeptics. So these are the ones that it takes a long time to convince uh, that this technology or management practice is going to do their, their dairy good and are going to be skeptical um, of such. So as we think about our, our neighbors, our competitors, other people in the industry, we can probably pinpoint uh, dairies and, and people who fall into um, each of these different categories. So today I, I think um, I wanted to cover two reasons why I think it's okay not to be an early adopter of technology in the in the dairy industry. The first of which is I do not think that many of the technologies in our industry provide enough of a competitive advantage to be worth the risk of implementing that technology. So that um, that was a lot. So to break that down, uh, so let's say um, the technology is a teat spraying robot to pre dip our, our cows on a rotary. So uh, big investment of, of, of money, you know, fancy technology, see the teeth sprays, we've all seen the fancy arms. So when we implement that technology, what, what's, the, what's the return? Well, we have consistent prep, we uh, remove one uh, employee from the parlor, so maybe three full-time equivalents from, from the dairy operation. So, so there is a return, you know, we do have labor savings, we might have some performance uh, advantages from the, from the consistent dip. But when we look at this technology in terms of the whole business, it's really not a game changer. It, it's a marginal competitive advantage. So if we had a whole string of these, you know, where we had save a person here, a person here, a person here, all throughout the day, we cut our labor in half, then it's a different story. That's a large competitive advantage. Our labor savings are going to be much more competitive than our, than our neighbors. But in the large part, a lot of the technologies that are available in our industry only provide us a small uh, competitive advantage. So that that's one reason to wait. That we're not gonna, you know, we're not gonna go out of business tomorrow if we're not on the cutting edge of every piece of technology. So that's like it sounds a little bit conservative in that in that way. But I think when you combine it with my next reason, um, which is the the risk that is associated with investing in these technologies, I think it makes a lot of sense. So one of the reasons I wanted to talk to about this topic today was the recent news about uh, a facial recognition bunk scanning type product that uh, sounds like it may be uh, discontinued 
or uh, not supported fully um, in the market anymore. Along with, in the past uh, year and a half, two years, another activity rumination monitor, you know, coming off off the market. So we have, you know, two big technologies, two uh, supported by uh, well-known companies that are, are ending up, you know, f failing in, in the industry. And those dairies that invested both the time and the money in these these products. Um, are finding their investments of time and money to be pretty uh, unfruitful. So um, by waiting to be that early majority to see which products are actually um, adopted, have a clear ROI, have the bugs worked out, you know, isn't just all marketing hype, um, provides us a more sound investment. Um, and to support this, I, I really like to reference uh, some research out of MIT around uh, consumer products. So they, they were researching uh, consumers out of grocery stores and were, were pinpointing these consumers that were always attracted to these really bad products. So like coffee flavored Coke, uh, watermelon flavored potato chips, you know, products that you and I know are bad and know are going to fail. But there's a group of consumers that uh, they deem the harbingers of failure uh, who really attracted to the, these types of products. Um, so in the diffusion of innovation in the in the curve, these might be these these early adopters, some of them. You know, they really like the new thing. They're really attracted to it, want to try it and really like it. Yet the product ends up failing. So the word of advice, word of... Uh, caution is be on the lookout for those in our industry who seem to really like uh, new products and they new products that they choose to implement consistently fail. Um, so just just a word to look out because the research shows out of this MIT that those those products and those people are, are harbingers. They're going to be forecasting which products are going to fail. Uh, the other one is by being in that early majority and waiting for the data to to come in we can easily or more easily calculate the true return for investment in this technology so the one i i like uh to use an example is around like rumination and activity monitor systems so these have obviously been around for for a while now i mean we're probably more in that uh probably between early and late uh, majority of adoption of, of these technologies but we can pretty easily calculate uh, the reduction in, in shots and reproductive hormones because um, we're able to cherry pick more often our reduction in shot programs. Uh, we're able to see uh, the percent uh, reduction in death loss by catching sick animals and, and getting call value um, instead of paying for rendering. So we, we can actually see these benefits uh, come to fruition with these different systems and we obviously know how much they cost to implement so we can calculate a clear ROI. So um, my word of caution, word of advice for today is it's okay not to be first. Uh, look out for those, those farms, those competitors who are always attracted to products who fail. And when uh, you're calculating your ROI, look for that data, look for uh, the information before you invest. All right, I hope you enjoy. Always follow up with me if there's any uh, any questions, rebuttals. Uh, welcome them all. Thank you.